My name is Adibayo Unigbanjo. I work in the Chief Technology Office um, on the, the new business unit called the Enterprise Intelligence Software Group. And so for those of you that were here yesterday, the CTO spoke about it. Uh, it was announced last November. Uh, it's a commitment by Zebra to allow you guys that access in the data that we're creating at the edge of our network. Okay, and so I'm gonna walk you through the framework of that platform, uh, how we intend to build it, uh, some of the services that we intend to provide. I'll show you an example of an application that we've built in-house today that's actually using the data coming from that platform. Uh, and then I'm also going to introduce what we're calling the Enterprise Asset Intelligence Accelerator Program. Um, so I think Tom mentioned it yesterday, the idea behind this is, listen, it's early days, we're trying to figure this out as well, but I think if we can get some of you on board to help us define that. So an example is what type of data sets do we want to collect? In what format do you want those data sets? Uh, what's the documentation should look like? And so that's what the early adopter accelerator program will be. Uh, I will announce where you can get more information. You can also send me an email if you want, if you're interested in that. So once we launch, which would kind of be in the July timeframe, uh, you start getting the necessary communication around that. Okay. Um, the title like, kind of went away from what was out there, but it's really around enabling intelligent workflow. So a lot of what Zebra is talking about today is, you heard it yesterday, the system of reality. We're in a world now where we think we have the opportunity to start changing the way people work. Historically, what we've done is manufacture devices that have allowed people to do work. Now, with the data that we're creating and you're creating, there's an opportunity to help our end user customers to actually transform the way they work. And that's the whole premise behind this digital transformation, okay? So, I'm going to cover data as the new reality. I'll give you a good example um, of one way we're looking at it. Introduce the data system framework. I'll talk about the partner play, the opportunity for you guys and some of the things we expect. Uh, I'll give you an example, or actually three examples of uh, solutions today that we're building out using that same framework and then talk about the Partner Accelerator. So that's Pokemon Go in the background for anybody that's never played it and I hope you've all tried it. So this is a personal request. I think all of us that work in the B2B world sometimes look out there in the consumer world and kind of think, oh, they're doing something totally different. Try every app out there that's a top 10 app in any Play Store for the sake of it. Because what it's going to do for you, it's going to give you a totally completely different mindset to understand what is happening in the environments that you're playing in. So think of the folks who are serving retail, right? You're building applications for retail. All those sales associates, when they leave their job, they're on Pokemon Go, they're on Snapchat, they're on Instagram. So you want to test those things out, so that's a personal uh, note I'm just putting out there. So let's look at this. Um, I think three, four years ago, I hope everybody played Candy Crush. It was just the basic app. It was an app that was sitting on your phone. You had to just figure out boxes and crush them so you get points. But it had nothing to do with the device itself. The device was primarily just the host. Okay? We still have a lot of applications like that in the enterprise today. Now compare that to Pokemon Go. The concept of Pokemon Go on a high level, when you read about it, most people just kind of tell you it's augmented reality. So it's an application that's augmenting the environment you're in. But then let's take a deep dive into how that actually happens. Pokemon Go uses your GPS on the phone. The application actually requests the GPS location on that device every single time because it needs that to determine the direction in which you're going, okay? It uses the accelerometer to determine your pace. If you're too fast, you're not going to see the Pokemon. So it needs to know exactly how fast you're going. Okay? Location. It is your location because if you open Pokemon and go in my house, you'd see a different Pokemon than if you opened it in your house. That's based on your geolocation. Okay? And then the camera. The camera is actually what allows you to visualize that. Now just look at that and that's in the concept of just the B2B user. Put that in our enterprise environment. Any enterprise environment, I don't care. Warehouse, manufacturing, uh, transport and logistics, retail back of store, 
there are billions of events that are happening today. Those events are being captured by some form of device. Some form of device is capturing that information. Look at images. Even if you looked at our smart set lens that was announced early this year, we have a camera in that smart lens. It's capturing thousands of frames per second. Okay? That is data points that can now be used to enhance experiences and application. You talk about sensing. We already have a lot of sensors in the environment. Are we taking advantage of that? Are we actually building our applications to say, listen, I know this retailer has this sensor in the environment. I know this warehouse has this sensor in the environment. Right? Location information. Zebra is a big location company. Everything we do, the premise behind it is based on location. That's data that's been out there. We've never really considered how to monetize it or how to use it and provide you guys data that you can enhance your application. If you look at the use case that everybody likes about Zebra, that's popular, it's the NFL solution. What are we doing? We've tagged NFL players and we know their location. And based on that location, we can calculate how fast they're going and we feed that to broadcast. That's ex the exact same scenario happens in a warehouse every single day. There's an asset, probably the same size as an NFL quarterback, uh, linebacker, that's moving, that someone needs to know exactly where it's coming from that's gonna trigger the next workflow. That's the opportunity we have to start taking this data and start integrating it into the applications that we're building. So you saw the top side of this. We talk about the sensors, we talk about the analytics, private cloud or public cloud creates the new system of reality. Okay, so what's the new system of reality? If you haven't read the Jeffrey Moore book, in basic terms, it's really talking about the digital transformation. It's talking about data-driven solutions. So it's going to be solutions that really require data to deliver something. And it also in includes workflow transformation. Okay? So let's look at the framework that we're building. I think Tom showed this yesterday. One thing I want you all to think about, and I, I think it's a, it's a it's a notion that's going to go on from now on. I think four years ago when the whole IoT stuff that I get into the enterprise, there was a lot of talk around IoT platforms. And there was this notion that you know, there was going to be one platform that wins it all. I think we're getting into an age now where every industrial enterprise, based on the industry, is going to have some form of platform. Okay? You talk into retail. Healthcare has their own platform. Manufacturing has their own platform. And the beauty of this is that Platforms are going to become standard tools in our environment. Now, those platforms will need to talk to each other because that's how you drive value from that. Okay? So, this is really similar to a platform framework. You have the devices at the edge of the network. That's what senses for you. Okay, that's what's capturing information and that's what knows what's going on. That device has to have a way to communicate. Yesterday when I presented in the retail, I had questions around, oh, do you have an SDK to do this? SDK was kind of like the very early days of how we could allow devices and extract data from them. In the future, this is going to become seamless. You have to get to an embedded location type connectivity where that device is embedded with the chipset from a security perspective and the data coming from that device is something you can easily extract and get information from. Now you have to store the data after you capture it. You have to analyze the data um, and then you have to make the data available for sharing because that platform is really a framework to allow other people to access the information coming from that device. You offer analytics on it. It could be prescriptive, it could be preventive, it depends on what you want to do. It depends on how much data you actually, uh, you know, you want to present. And then of course at the top of it, you have that API where partners like yourselves can build applications. So if you think about that in the context of an environment, from a Zebra printer perspective, Next generation Zebra printers will be connected. They will share all their information. You don't want to worry about how I'm connecting to that Zebra printer. What you want is the data that's coming based on the events and actions that printer is taking so you can inject that into your application. That's what this framework will allow you to do. Okay? Now, of course, there's going to be integration into external systems. There'll be legacy systems, so ERP. So, for example, we've done some initial integration with SAP. There's a connector 
where the data coming from a device we've captured going through the framework can easily go into SAP. Now, SAP has their own platform, right, where you could do all sorts of other stuff in it. But SAP in reality is never going to care about connecting a zebra print or a zebra scanner. But that doesn't mean a zebra print or a zebra scanner is not at the edge of the network that's capturing information that's actually critical to that next workflow. And so that's what this framework is about, to help you enable that type of stuff. Sliced across that is going to be security and identity. I want to know the device I'm getting. I want to know that device that's at the edge of the network. I want to know the location. I want to know the exact serial number, the version of that device. Okay? That's all going to be embedded with security. Now, because of where we play, there's the ask of, oh, I don't want my network in the cloud yet. There's still a lot of proprietary information that people are not comfortable sharing in the cloud. So we have the capabilities to actually do on-prem or in the cloud. This would depend on your specific use cases. Okay. So if we break that down, like I said, you have device connectivity, uh, data configuration and management, and tools. Uh, in the middle of it, kind of like the core of it, is where you have the data capture, the big data and machine learning stuff. Okay. And of course, at the top is where we provide the APIs and tools so you can easily integrate into those. So it's always easier with a block diagram so you understand exactly how it's going. I have a Zebra agent in there. What that means is we're going with uh, an industry standard by ARM. Uh, it's called Embed. It's an IoT type chipset. Uh, so all chipsets that are manufactured by ARM come manufactured with that software license. That goes into the production of the physical device. What that does is embeds the connectivity layer on that device. So any embed device already has its own standard protocol of extracting the information from the device. Okay? Now, that provides me current state's information, properties, status, settings on that particular device. That has an API. So you might only be interested in saying, I'm not even interested in whatever services Zebra wants to offer me, but I need a seamless way to connect data and extract data from that device. That's a clean, simple way. The device is there. The device has internet connectivity. It's publishing all that information. You know that the exact address to extract the data from, and that goes directly into your application. Don't worry about anything else. Now, there's the opportunity to go into what we're calling near real-time analytics. Okay, so that captures the device information, pretty much everything similar to that, but it also reports real-time events. For those of you that went into the transport and logistics session yesterday, you saw some of the stuff we're doing with trailer load anal analytics, right? So the smart park. There's a device in there that's monitoring the load process at the back of a truck. Each pick we can capture. Now, there are going to be events in there that need to be triggered to the warehouse guy that's managing 50 dock doors and can be only in one location at a time. That's a near real-time event. And that's data that we're also going to be able to provide. The other part of that is there's also the capabilities to actually inject data from the environment. So this could be a third-party scenario. What does it mean for me in a warehouse environment or in a, in a yard where I have a truck coming? I know that that truck has actually been received. Now, can I take information from maybe the warehouse yard management system to say, I want to send that truck that's just you know, arrived into the environment and send it to Dr. 12, because I know Dr. 12 is what is actually available right now. That is taking information from the external environment and enhancing what data you have. And then, of course, we have an Hadoop platform that's managing whole big data stuff. Right, so here we can keep historical data, batch data, store it. Uh, we're currently in the process of trying to get as many data scientists out there, and I'm sure a lot of you understand the challenges around that. But the idea is you have that batch data that you can start learning from and start creating some historical type analysis that potentially will lead you into prescriptive analytics. Okay? That is kind of what we're calling intelligent insight, and that provides you additional data that's different. Now, when you get to that top, this is really where it gets exciting, the applications. The type of applications we think are really going to be exciting are going to be workflow transformational. I'll show you examples of some of the ones that we're doing today. 
But those are the applications. Not applications that just tell me this is what's happening. They have to be applications that potentially tell me what is happening and what is the next best move for me. That's exactly what we're doing in that smart pack scenario. We're monitoring the dock doors. We know how they're loading the trucks. We know the utilization on those trucks. And we can tell that warehouse manager or supervisor to say, you need to go to dock door 12 right now because the load process is faulty. For any of you that have done any of this type of holiday jobs where you're loading, if you think about the pressure that UPS and those guys have today to meet travel and delivery commitments, understanding what dock door to go to and who needs help so you can ensure that that truck leaves on time is significantly critical. A lot of the apps we have today give visibility to all the doctors, but doesn't tell the supervisor where to go next. And that makes the difference between this data world we're going into and the world we're planning to leave. Okay. So the cloud components, uh, I'm not sure if the color fades out well, but uh, pretty much everything can live in the cloud. Okay. Uh, for the on-prem type scenario, you can see there's a slice that goes through the big data platform. And the reason you don't really want to put big data on your prem is just because it's a lot of infrastructure cost. Okay? You can do all the capabilities around the current device status, the near time, real time analytics, but in reality, you want to keep big data processing into a cloud platform. Okay. Let's look at some of the benefits. Faster time to market. This is going to be key. All of you guys in this room are extremely smart. If you wanted to do it today and take a Zebra device or a Zebra product, build the agent for it, connect it into some form of cloud subscription that you've gotten from AWS or anybody, figure out how you filter that data, analyze the data, and then pull that data into your application, you could get it done. It's not rocket science. The question is, can you scale that fast? And can you build that fast? And that's why a platform like this helps because you don't have to worry about how do I connect into that Zebra handheld device. You no longer have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about what agent version am I running on that device? How do I protect security? How do I answer security questions with the enterprise? How do I scale fast? How do I support multiple locations? That's what this framework allows you to do so you can focus on the application side of things, where your real strengths are and the real value is. Integrated analytics. So we're talking about potentially offering you that next level near time, real time analytics where you can bring in events into your applications. Can you take exactly what's happening in the environment, analyze that and be able to offer additional services beyond what your applications are doing today? There's the whole integrated cloud connect. I mentioned that using ARM embed. Today we tested, you know, agents on the device. We have different agents on the device so we can get data from that device but it's really not the most efficient way based on the, way, the architecture of the IoT. We expect all these devices, billions of these devices, they're not going to be having agents on them. They're going to have integrated chipsets because the embedded security level is significantly different. Once you have security embedded into a device, it's different than putting a software layer on top of a device. Okay? You talk about lower risk. So once you start doing a platform like that, like I mentioned, Zebra, one of the strengths we have is location. We do a lot of location and technology across the business. Now, if you have a framework where you can start applying some of the knowledge from all these various use cases, you're going to get into a scenario where it significantly makes sense for you. Um, I don't know if there's anybody from Jibestream. I mean, they're doing some indoor mapping stuff, right? They have tools to take car diagrams and be able to build mapping information around it. But they need location information. They want to know how things are moving. They want to go into how can start tra tracking IV pumps. How do you tag the IV pumps? They don't want to get into that. They don't want to tag an IV pump or worry about what kind of tagging infrastructure is on, on the pump. They just want that location information. So their map is more intelligent. So if you ask Jivestream, go build this. Go figure out what tag are you going to put on the IV pump. Figure out how you're going to read the tag from the RFID reader or whatever sensor you're using to capture that data. Figure out how you're going to secure that data. Figure out how you're going to filter the data because from a location data is streaming every two seconds and you really don't need two seconds. You only want to know when the IV pump is moving. So you're going to build a platform that's going to actually filter out all the noise and take only the information you need, 
just so your app is intelligent. These guys are like 10 guys. They just want to make a difference in the world, and they don't want to boil the ocean. That's what a framework like this does for you. So why should you care? I think I've touched on a couple of it, but the two things that stand out for me, location and ML. Okay, I put ML slash AI, but this is really where it's going. Any app that's going to be successful in the enterprise in the near future has to take location into consideration. You have to be able to understand the context of where you're serving that. Okay? Just like I said, look at the consumer side. They're significantly faster than us because you and I can relate to it. If you want to go make an enterprise decision, you think about the consequences of it. Should I change this? Should I not change this? But as an individual, you buy a Google Home. It works for you, fine. If it doesn't work for you, okay. 200 bucks, I'm fine. It doesn't happen like that in the enterprise. But the idea is look at what's happening in those scenarios. Every application today takes advantage of location. <laughs> because location is critical to what I am doing. My location at the front of the store and the task I perform there is significantly different from the task I perform at the back of the store, okay? We see retail, we talk a lot about click and collect. People come, they buy online, they come into the store. They come into the store, what they wanna do is collect. I've, I already bought online, I just wanna pick up my store. In the retail environment, they seem confused, like who's gonna serve that customer? It's a location issue. Who's the closest person to pick up the collectible item and give it to the customer? If your application start providing that type of insight into the retailer's operation, that's what they're looking for. Now we talk about ML and AI. Again, significant, right? There's a lot of data out there. The value of that volume of data is can you learn from it? Can you build models from that? There's one use case that we're trying to work on right now. It's around food safety. Um, for those of you that I don't know, I'll tell you a simple story. In the food environment, you take produce, for example. You harvest your lettuce, you clean it, you bag it. There's a standard algorithm out there that says, based on the day you harvest it, it's T plus 12. Okay? So that lettuce is going to expire in 12 days. It's stamped, it's bagged, and it's shipped. Now, everything that happens between that supply chain doesn't affect that expiry date. That driver could pick up the lettuce, drive to his friend's house, leave the truck open, still delivers it at the store, the store pick it, put it on the counter, and it's all these. And that's why you and I sometimes buy lettuce. We look at the expiry date, it's still next week. We get home, we take a piece of it, and the next morning it's gone. Because there were so many profile changes that happened in that supply chain that nobody considered. That's where ML starts coming in. You have a sample set of shipments, you start shipping, you build a data profile on it. You know exactly what the optimal temperature and condition to ship that lettuce from that farm to the store is. You build a profile from that. Now you know what you can reject and what you can accept. And that's the beauty of ML. And so every application you're building today, you need to think in that concept. What data am I collecting? How can I learn from this data to enhance not just my application, but the experience of my customer? Okay, so let's talk about some examples we built. This is an internal tool. It's called Spotfire. Okay? It's built specifically for all our handheld devices. Okay? The handheld devices get shipped today. Once they're powered on, they connect to Wi-Fi or any internet connectivity. We can start telling all those data sets from there the status ID, the OS version, the network, the time zone. Uh, we know the location. We know the battery usage. We know the application usage history. So I know which apps are powered on. I know when they're powered on. I know which apps actually crash the device. OK? Again, this uses the exact framework I just showed you. There's a device. The device has the agent. That agent allows it to connect into the framework. That framework captures all that data, filters the data, and this dashboards you're seeing is just running off an API. The exact same way you guys will interact with the data. Okay? I can show you a bit more about that. This, was, this is OVS AVS. So Tom B. and Kuli showed this yesterday. Again, this is our services platform. Notice the fact this is using the exact same data sets as the previous application. But they're two different applications. They're important to two different sets of people. 
That is the world you live in. The data that's going to come from those environments, the location information, it's going to be valuable for Jibestream, for their map, but it's also going to be valuable for you for the application and price speaking check that you're writing. That is the new world you're living in. Patient flow analytics. Again, it's a very simple application we built for healthcare. We're using wristbands, smart wristbands on patients to know the exact location so we can help the hospital actually move the patient through. For those of you that do anything in healthcare, one of the most critical challenges for healthcare is understanding where the patient is and making sure that that patient can go through the system. In ER, a significant amount of people actually go to the ER, but because they don't get attended to, get up and leave. That's like you have a business, someone walks in, because your cashier or salesperson doesn't attend to them quickly, they walk out. That is significant loss of revenue. Okay? So this application simply tags the patient. Today, if you go into any hospital, you're getting a wristband from a zebra printer. Okay? We're instrumenting this, this wristbands to be intelligent, to be smart. That's the difference. So we can know your location. We can understand how long you've been staying there. We can understand who needs to attend to you and be able to alert that person with a near real-time analytics event. Okay? The value to the hospital, they immediately know who's been staying longest. They can prioritize. They understand how patients flow through the hospital. Bed management is a major issue in ER. If I don't have enough beds, I can't take new patients. But there are times patients are actually left the building, but nobody has gone to clean that room because nobody had visibility to that patient leaving. Or maybe the nurse that had visibility to it was going to go back to her system and type in environmental services, please can you clean bed two? But on our way, there was a new cardiac arrest and obviously that takes priority. Can you automate those type of things? That's exactly what this does. Now, we talk about the next steps for you guys. So, this is our roadmap. It's non-committal, but it gives you a good idea of where we're going and what we're trying to build. The current controlled use is current state API. So remember that API architecture I provided to you? You can get the basic data information, device status information, properties, settings, that is available today. Okay? Future roadmap, the capabilities to inject an API from the external environment. Okay? This will not necessarily be enterprise legacy systems, but it will be simple tools like social media, for example, weather, APIs that exist today that you can simply streamline and inject. Okay? Remote device management API, that will give you the capabilities to actually be able to talk back into that device. So your application, for example, might be able to do that. Then we're going into the second half of the year where we expect some custom batch modeling. The idea behind this is then we think we're going to have enough data sets where we can do some models around the data. So handheld data, for example, or barcode scanners. We can create a model for you that you can look at and start building your applications around. Okay? This is our plan. To help us get here, we're going, we're going to need your help. Okay? This is some of the data device sets that are available today. Uh, on the handheld side, I tried to break them down based on products. Uh, sensors are extremely third party sensors. <coughs> so these are sensors that are based on the ARM embed chipset where we don't have to do any integration. They already support the same protocol that the framework platform supports. So we can just inject the data from them. Uh, the RFID readers, you can see, but we expect this list to grow. I said, you know, when I was preparing the slide, I hope I can't present a slide like this next year because that will mean we've not grown. I expect the data sets volumes to go. All I'm going to tell you is give you a link and then you can go subscribe to any type of data sets you need. But that's the idea behind this. Okay? And if you think about it, then you also have the device information, the functions, actions. Uh, those are things that we can build as well.